How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be looking at how we can schedule tasks in Python using one of my favorite packages, and that is the schedule package. So let's get started immediately by opening up the terminal and typing in pip install schedule. And with this package, it just makes scheduling anything you want to schedule very easy, which means if you want to post a tweet every 10 seconds or every two weeks at a certain given time, this package just makes it super easy. So after having installed that, I do want to mention that I've created a helper module and all this helper module does is get the current time and returns it in this format. I just want to have that so that I can import it into my main file and use it as I please. And that's where you're going to see import helper. That's my personal helper function. Next, I'm going to import the schedule and I will also import time. Now to perform a task, we need to create a task, of course. So let's create this task. We're just going to call it task. And this task is going to print doing task. So again, this can be posting a tweet or something on social media. It can be sending an email. It can be running some sort of task on your computer. This can be anything you want. And we're just going to use the helper.getTime so we can see when this was being executed. Now I'm going to create a few examples of how you can get started with using the schedule package. So first let's type in schedule and we're going to use the first method, which is every, and here you can put an interval. I'm going to say five and I'm going to pick seconds for this one. So every five seconds, we're going to do the following task. And it's as simple as that to create a task. To execute this task, we need to type in while true and we need to schedule and run pending. And this is required to actually run the tasks that have fallen into that five second time frame. because just because five seconds has elapsed doesn't mean that Python knows that it should run it. It needs to check it continuously to understand that there is something to run. So we need to use run pending to run everything that is now available to be run. And we're going to give this a time.sleep of one second. Otherwise, this will loop extremely fast for no reason. But we can actually run this right now. And you'll see that every five seconds, it's going to perform this task in the console. So doing task at 90052. And the next time it's going to be at 57. So it's doing it every five seconds. Now, the beauty of this package is that it is extremely readable. So instead of seconds, we can also decide to do it in minutes or we can do it in hours or we can do it in days. And finally, we can also do it in weeks. And it was that simple to create a schedule. As you can see now, it's going to do it every five minutes, every five hours, every five days and every five weeks. And these are five tasks that we've created, which means if these are different tasks, they will run at different times. Now, let's say you want to be more specific with the time that you want to run a task at. Well, you can type in schedule every, and instead of adding the time there, you can actually type in minute, for example, and we're going to say at, and here we're going to add the second that we want this to run at. So on every minute at the 15th second mark, we want to run the following task, do, and we'll insert our task. So it's going to run that each time the time triggers at the 15 second mark, which means it can be 10, 15, 11, 15, 12, 15. Every time it reaches the 15 on the clock on the seconds portion, it's going to trigger this task. And the same thing works with the hour. So this will trigger every time it hits 15 on the hour. And it doesn't have to be every single hour. You can also say every 10th hour trigger this task at the following minute. So every 10 hours, it's going to check hey, is the time 10.15 or is it 11.15, 12.15? Whatever time it is, 10 hours later, it's going to trigger at the 15 minute mark. I'm going to remove all of this because you can also do it with the day. You can say trigger this every day at the given time. And here we can say trigger it at 15.15. So every day it's going to trigger it at this given time. And we do need to always provide the do task if you want it to actually do something, of course. So every day at 1515, it's going to perform this task. And you can also be as specific as you want. You can do it with these seconds as well. You can say at 151540, do this task if it's really important that it performs the task at that given time frame. 
And another great feature of this is that you can say, do this every Monday or every Tuesday, Thursday, whatever day of the week you want. And it's going to work as well. You can say, do it every Monday and it will perform this task. Or you can also do, do every Monday at 15, 15, and it will perform that task every Monday at this time frame. So you can get very specific with this package and that is just wonderful how easy it is to create a schedule without having to worry about time, date, and so on. I also want to show you that this package has a decorator for your jobs, your tasks, your functions, just to make it a bit more easy for you. So we can type in from schedule, we're going to import repeat and every. So we're going to import those two just to make it look a bit cleaner. So we can use this decorator now on the function or the task that you want to run. And here you just type in every, let's say 10 seconds. And it's going to run this function every 10 seconds now. So we don't need the schedule down here anymore. We can just run it as is. And if we run it, it's going to run in the console every 10 seconds. But at this point, I'm sure you're wondering, well, it's been easy to start tasks without any arguments, but what if you actually want to pass in an argument to your functions when you are scheduling them? Well, let's stop the program and try to do that. So we can remove this part right here for now, and we will just create another schedule. So schedule every five seconds. And what we want to do is the task. So do, and we'll pass in the task. Right now, the task doesn't take any arguments. So let's create some arguments. So arg1 and arg2, for example. And we're going to... And we're going to edit this function just slightly. So we're going to say args are equal to, and I want this to be a formatted string. So args are going to be equal to, and we're going to add arg1 and arg2. So this will create a tuple because we have a comma in there, but it's going to use those arguments in the task just to show you that we can use them. And to use them is actually really simple. Everything that comes after the comma of the task will be passed in as an argument. So here you can say 10 as a string and you can say Luigi and 10 doesn't have to be a string actually, it can also be an integer or anything you want to pass in as an argument. Now, if we run this, you'll see that every five seconds, it's going to run this task with the given arguments inside. So doing task arguments is equal to 10 and Luigi at this time over here. And five seconds later, it's going to do it again. And that's super cool. But what about with the decorator? How would you do that with the decorator? And it's really the same thing. Just type in repeat. And here you need to repeat how many times. So you say every five seconds. And then you just pass in the arguments. You say five and Luigi, and it will work exactly the same way. Now we can run this program and every five seconds, it's going to perform this task with the given arguments that you've put inside repeat. And what's really cool about the repeat decorator is that you can add multiple of them. So you can duplicate this and you can say that every six seconds, you want to print the value of zero and Mario. So now if we run this and wait five seconds, Luigi will be printed. And if we wait six seconds, Mario will be printed. As you can see in the console here, Luigi is being printed every five seconds, but Mario is being printed every six seconds, which is really cool because you can add many variants to your repeat decorator. But let's simplify all of this again. Let's remove the repeat keyword and remove the arguments from our function just to keep it as simple as possible because what I need to show you next is how you can cancel a job or a task. So here we're going to type in job is going to equal schedule dot every, and we're going to say hour at the 30 minute mark. And I don't think you need the zeros actually, that would be absolutely wrong. And we're going to do the task. So to cancel a job at any point, you just need to type in schedule.canceljob and pass in the job. And just by doing that, it's going to make sure that this will never run again. And you can actually confirm that by printing schedule.alljobs or get all jobs, I think. Yeah, get jobs. But let's run that and you'll see that when you try to get the jobs, there will be nothing in there because we've canceled it 
ahead of time. If we do not cancel that and we run it, we will have the job inside our list when it comes to getting all the jobs. But now comes another question. What if we want to run our job or our task only one time? Well, there is some special syntax for that. And to do that, you would have to actually return a special type. And here we're going to return schedule.cancelJob inside the task that you want to run only one time. Because once this triggers, this will tell the job that, okay, this was the only time you should have used it. Now cancel it so we don't have to run it again. So now we can type in schedule dot every five seconds do the task and i'm also going to start adding this print statement at the bottom and the print statement is just going to say jobs and we're just going to get back the length of schedule dot get jobs so this will help us understand how many jobs we have that are actually active but let's run this now and what you'll notice in the console is that Run pending is going to be triggered every second, but until the job is actually ready to be run, it's not going to run. But once it is ready to run, it's going to run that task, and then it's going to remove it from the active jobs, which means we'll have zero jobs left, and this will run forever because it is only going to run what's pending, but we have no jobs to be run. So it's not going to run anything after it has been canceled. Now that's pretty cool, but what if we have a lot of jobs and at a certain point in our program, we just want to cancel them all? Well, there is another thing we can do there, and that is to call schedule.clear. So now it's going to run the pending, so every five seconds it's going to print all of these tasks, but at the end it is going to clear all of them. So when we run this, it's going to start with having four jobs in total, but as soon as we clear it, it's going to have zero jobs, which means if we run this, you'll see the first second will have four jobs, the second second will have zero, because on this first loop, we cleared them immediately. Another really cool feature with this schedule package is that you can add tags to your schedules, which means you can organize them and you can actually filter them. And this is actually very important to know because pretend you have some schedules, you can say schedule every minute, and you want to do the following. And of course, it will be our infamous task. But this time we can add a tag such as work. And we can add multiple tags in case you want to associate them with different options. So now we have two tags here, we have work and one and you can add more tags or less tags, but that's solely up to you. So we have this one here, and we're going to duplicate it four times, we're going to say every hour, every day, and every week. And here we're going to say fun and work and fun, but we're going to change the last two to two. So they all have different tags. And now we can actually filter those in case we want to run certain tasks or we want to cancel certain tasks, we can now refer to the tag to actually fetch them, run them or delete them. So for example, if we want to get all the fun tags, we'll type in schedule dot get jobs, and we'll say by fun. And alternatively, we would do the same thing for the work. So here we'll type in work, and we will get all of the jobs associated with this work variable. Just to prove all of that, we can print fun, and we can print work. And I'm just going to comment out this for now, because we don't need it. And if we run this, you'll see that we'll get two lists back with two jobs in each one of these lists. But we do not need this at the moment. And let's uncomment this. And I'm also going to print the jobs above time.sleep. Because here I want to show you that we can schedule and clear jobs by a given tag such as fun, because we do not want the fun jobs. Now if we run this, it will start with four jobs, and then it will go down to two jobs because we cleared all the jobs that had the tag of fun. So that's really cool that you can filter your jobs just by adding some tags. But up next, I want to show you how you can run your jobs at random time intervals. So we don't need these down here, just to make it simple again. And in between task and while true, we're going to add schedule dot every one, two, 10 seconds. We're going to do the following task. And again, you can see how easy it was to create a function or a schedule with this package. It's plain English. And that's why I love this package so much. And I really recommend you use it if you want to create schedules, 
because it's just easy to read and easy to use. And if we run this every one to 10 seconds, it's going to do the following task. And you'll see it in the console that every one to 10 seconds, it's going to perform it. It can be 10 seconds, it can be five seconds, it can be seven seconds, but it's going to fall in that range. But there's something else that's very important that you should know how to do, and that's how to schedule a job until a certain time. So we're going to say every 10 seconds dot until, and here you can give it a certain time. So the easy way to do it is to give it an hour such as 1910, and we always need to call do task. So this will run every second, every 10 seconds until this given time, and then it will stop which is quite cool, but it's not very specific if you want to also mention a date. So this actually works with date time as well. So if you want to, you can just paste in your date and time like this. I mean, I need to import it, of course, but you can paste in your date time and it's going to run this until 2024. And that will finish on the 12th month on the 31st day at the hour 10, 20 minutes and 15 seconds. So you can get really specific on how far you want this to go until, and after that, it's not going to run anymore. We now officially have an end time for our task to run. Now we're getting near the end of how to use this package. I only have two more examples to show you, and these are quite important. So first I'm going to paste in this over here, where you can see we're scheduling this task every Monday at 10 and every Tuesday at 15 but maybe something urgent has come up. So we're going to call schedule run all. And this is going to run all of the tasks as soon as we call this method. And there's also an optional argument that you can pass in, and that is the delay in seconds. So if you pass in a delay in seconds of 10, it's going to run the first function, and then it's going to wait 10 seconds before running the second, in case you don't want every job to run at the same time. So let's add a one second delay here because if we now run this in the console, it's going to use the task immediately, and you'll see that it used both of them with a one second delay in between. Moving on to the last thing I want to show you about schedule, and that is how to run threaded tasks, because right now we run into the issue that if we run a task that is blocking, who knows, maybe you're making an API request or something that's blocking your program, it's not going to be able to perform another task until this task is done. So let's actually change that to time sleep dot five seconds. And to prove this, we're going to type in schedule dot every one seconds do the following, which is the task. And we're going to get rid of run all. But check this out. As soon as we run the program, we will get the first output, but it's not running them every one seconds it's only running them every five seconds because we have the time.sleep that blocks the execution of our lines of code because this is a blocking task. And that's not really good because maybe you want some tasks to be run concurrently. So the solution would be to import threading. And we need to create another function that starts a thread. So here we'll type in def start thread and it's going to take a function and it's going to take a job one, which will be threading dot thread, because we need to start a thread. And here we'll add the target, which will be the function itself. And we'll type in job one dot start. So now we have this function that starts a thread. So what we have to do instead now is start the thread and pass in the task or the job. So with this simple fix, we can now rerun the program and it's going to start the task every second as we've planned. Even if they are blocking and have a five second sleep, it's still able to start these tasks without blocking our program. But anyways, that was actually a lot of explaining. I've been talking for 30 minutes straight now. Of course, I had to edit it down because it is a lot of content that I have been messing up on. So if you did enjoy this video, please do leave a like. It really helps me with understanding whether I should make more videos such as this one or whether I should try something else. And if you do have any suggestions on videos that I should make or something that you found interesting on in the Python documentation, please do share it in the comment section down below. I would love to make a video about it if it sounds interesting. But as always, with all that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.